Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to South Cleveland. We're so delighted that you would come and worship with us today. Uh, again, uh, this is different, but we should be pretty used to it by now because uh, we've done it for a while. And, uh, and we're just so thankful that you've come out today and, and that you're here uh, to worship with us. Hopefully that's what you've come to do today is, is worship the Lord. Uh, that's what we've come to do. And uh, I want to just open this service uh, in, in a time of worship as people continue to come in. And uh, we want to invite you just to jump right in with us and sing with us right in your car, right where you're at. Uh, but I want to open with a passage, a familiar passage found in Psalm 34. And it says this, I will praise the Lord at all times. Another version says, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness and let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all of my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, in my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all of my troubles for the angel of the Lord is a guard and he surrounds and defends all who fear him. So this is what we're gonna focus on today. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. No matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're struggling with, we serve a God that is good. And he, his mercies and his love, it endureth forever. So we're just going to sing about his goodness, and we just invite you guys to join right in with us. the goodness of God. I 
for your grace. God, we thank you for who you are. And we thank you that your presence is here because your word says that where two or three are gathered in your name, it doesn't matter if they're in a car or in a church, but you would be there in their midst. And we thank you for your presence that is in this parking lot this morning. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning you were in for a treat. Uh, We are blessed with someone who is not a stranger whatsoever to South Cleveland Church of God. Uh, but as Pastor and Dawn are, are away for some much-needed rest, uh, uh, they, we, uh, he invited someone who has served our denomination uh, in several different roles and capacities. But currently, he serves, and we are blessed to have him in the state of Tennessee as our administrative bishop. And I want you to give a warm South Cleveland welcome by the honking of your horn as Bishop Wayne Doherty comes to bring the word this morning to you. Amen. Thank you, thank you. What a joy it is to be with South Cleveland this morning. I appreciate you so much. The times I've had an opportunity to come and fellowship with you and preach, it's been so meaningful to me. Uh, This morning, I am filling in for your pastor. Your pastor is fine. He is well. 
Dawn is fine and well, and the boys are too. They are away on a much-deserved and needed little mini vacation. And uh, he called the other day and asked if I'd be here today, and I said, certainly I would. I rearranged my schedule to be with you folks. Thank you for being in church. Thank you, South Cleveland, for being here at the parking lot church today. He enjoyed the music this morning my Brother Lane and these others today that's led us to the Lord in, in music this morning. Honky horn if you've enjoyed the songs of praise this morning. Amen. Amen. If you're joining by live stream today, thank you for joining South Cleveland. Uh, join back again another time and hear one of the finest pastors and preachers in all of our movement, Edwin Lipsy, and uh, you'll be blessed for that. Told me I had 30 minutes sharp to preach. I've got an hour sermon to cram in in about 25 minutes. So this morning I want you to think about or turn in your Bible if you have your phone with you or your, your paper book Bible. Um, if you would, turn with me to Psalms 80. Something has been on my heart for several days, and this is a, a message I don't preach other places. This is what the Lord put on my heart to speak to you this morning, and hopefully you're blessed by the word of the Lord. Psalms 80, and normally I would read the entire psalm. That's I'm preaching from the entire psalm through the 19th verse, but for sake of time today, I'm just going to preach through the psalm, and I trust that you receive from the Lord this morning. Father, I thank you for your word. I pray, God, today that the anointed word would find its way into our hearts. Those that's visiting my live stream and those that are here in the parking lot today, let your word come alive in our lives. And, Father, we'll be careful to praise you for it in the name of Jesus Christ and believe it to be done. And amen and amen. This morning I want to speak to you on a, on a thought that's been burning in my heart, a miracle for America, a miracle for America. Turn with me to Psalms chapter 80, beginning in verse 1, and I'll begin to read in just a moment. America and the world is in an unprecedented crisis, and I am convinced that this nation that we call our nation, a nation so blessed by God, the greatest nation on the face of the earth, this nation, born July the 4th, 1776, in Philadelphia, must be born again. Or perhaps someday some historian will write the rise and fall of the American Empire. The history of Israel and the history of America are very much alike. And when you read the Psalms, Psalm 80, you're reading about the nation of Israel. But I see parallels throughout the entire chapter of Psalms 80 between Israel and America. Let me point out those parallels this morning to you. First of all, I see glorious design that God had for Israel. But Israel, like America, had a glorious heritage. Israel in her time, like America, was the wonder of the world. Psalms 80 was written in a time of national calamity. And if you look with me in verse 1 in Psalms 80, the writer says, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth for Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh stir up thy strength and come and save us. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved. Turn us again. Put us back, O God, like we were. Restore us, Lord, O God, because and cause your face to shine on us. We must confess this morning with a troubled heart that America has forgotten God. She is rolling in her luxuries. She is rolling king in her place she is reeling in her drunkenness. She is revolting in her morals. And she is rotting in her sin. America is perfumed with an aroma of religion and culture. The spiritual formaldehyde that disguises the deadly decay of a society. With all of the 
unction and emotion of my soul, I contend that we need a miracle for America. If you're trusting in our armaments, you are foolish. The scripture said some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our Lord God. We need a miracle for America. In Psalms 80, I want you to see how God blessed Israel. And then I want to make an application and show you parallels between Israel and America. There are principles that parallel the discerning eye can see as we look at the word. First of all, I want you to see that Israel was divinely planted. Look at verse 8 there in Psalms 80. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt, and thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. The vine that he's talking about is Israel. Israel was called God's vine. God himself put Israel in her land. God himself gave Israel the land of Canaan. And as well, America has been divinely planted by God himself. No other nation ever had such a Christian beginning as did the United States of America. Our original colony were founded because of our Christian faith. Men bowed in prayer as the Mayflower Compact was written beneath the decks of that little ship. The Mayflower Compact began with these words, In the name of God, Amen. Oh, listen, that's the way they started it. It was the desires of our pilgrim fathers for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith. I have no doubt that North America has prospered so much more than our continent below us in the South, South America, even though greater natural resources can be found in South America. Why, Brother Doherty, I'll tell you, this is what I think. Those who came to South America's shores, they came seeking for gold. But those those who came to our shores came seeking God. Our government is rooted in the belief of an almighty God. The declaration of faith begins this way. We hold these truths to be self-evident. They didn't quiver over it. They didn't argue about it. They didn't stutter. They didn't stammer. They didn't hesitate. They said this is self-evident. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are endowed by their creator with certain and unalienable rights in that one statement and sentence we see that they believed that man was a creation of God they didn't believe in evolution they believed a God who created man they believed a system of absolute morals certain unalienable rights they were fixed on that particular standard. The First Amendment was never meant to be prohibited in any American from praying in any place. Of those men who wrote the Constitution of the United States, 55 of those men, 30 of them were bold Christians. 20 of them were believing Christians who believed the Bible. Abraham Lincoln, president-elect, said, I quote his words this morning, Without the assistance of the divine being, I cannot succeed. And with that assistance, I cannot fail. Thomas Jefferson wrote these words. The God who gave us life gave us liberty at the same time. Revisionist and humanist and secularist and atheist would like to extract God from our American way of life but it cannot be done because God is written into the very American fabric. This nation was born in the fire of revival. Listen to our national anthem. That national anthem that so many people today are trying to downcast. Listen to the words. The star spangled banner. Our father's God to thee, author of liberty, 
to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might. Listen now, great God our King. Don't ever tell me that America does not have a King. We have a King and His name is Jesus. Let the humanist and the revisionist and the atheist and the secularist tell us that we have no right to speak of God in America and to put the principles of God in the government. But they are wrong. Americans believe in separation of church and state. But we don't believe for one moment in the separation of government from God. Israel was divinely planted. Israel was divinely protected. Look at verse 9. Thou preparedest room for it. That is divine. And thou didst cause it to take root, deep root, and it filled the land. This is, God went before the people and drove out their enemies. God gave them that land. Israel divinely protected. So it has been with America. God has protected this nation in a war-torn world. God has been gracious to us. Our fathers, God to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God, our King. Israel divinely planted, divinely protected. They were also, as we see in verse 10, divinely prospered. The hills were covered with the shadow of that is divine. And the burrows thereof were like the goodly cedars. She sent out her burrows unto the sea and her branches unto the river. As America has adhered to the principles of God's word, America has prospered as a nation. Americans are rich compared to many people in the world. That was God's glorious national design for Israel. And I see a parallel for America. Not only was there a glorious national design, but there was a grave national danger. Look at verse 12. Why hast thou then broken down her hedges, so that all they which pass by the way do pluck her? What kind of danger is it speaking of here? It's talking of an external danger. Divinely planted, divinely protected, divinely prospered. And now suddenly God removes the hedge. The wall is broken down. Anyone who comes back and pluck that fruit. We see America being plucked today by her enemies. America seems to be disintegrating right before our eyes. Judgment is upon us. Verse 12 speaks of an eternal or rather an external danger. All they that pass by pluck her. Not only is there an external danger, but there's an internal danger. Look at verse 13. The boar, which means the wild hog, out of the wood with waste it, and the wild beast of the field devour it. There were those internal within her, like wild beasts, wild animals that rooted up the very vine that God had planted See, God is not content to feed on the fruit. It wants to root down to where the root is in the vine. We're having those in America doing exactly that. Not only an external danger from enemies, but an internal danger of corruption. Our nation is tottering today. We can handle the Bin Ladens, the external but internally, America has become so immoral, so corrupt, so vile that God's judgment is pending on our nation. We've had more opportunities, more blessings, more preaching, more gospel than any other nation, yet have more policemen per capita than any other nation. 
We have more crime per capita than any other nation. Like a broken sewer being poured out over America, the vile and filth of Hollywood is unbelievable. Crime and immorality, the break of the home, uh, and the total disregard of the things of God. If you don't believe what I'm saying, then you're deaf and you're blind. Pick up a newspaper and see what's become the norm in our nation. There's a time wave across America of crookedness and lying and cheating and stealing and murder and lust and drugs. Wild hogs are rooting up the vine. Not only is there an external danger, and not only is there an internal danger. Hear me this morning, Cleveland. There's an eternal danger. Look at verse 14. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine and the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself. It is burned with fire. There's been a vine that was planted, protected, and prospered. And now, not only has it been burned, it's been cut down. Verse 16, look at that. They perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Enemies around. Enemies within. But hear me this morning. Hear me with my heart. There's a great enemy above. Eternal danger from God. If you don't hear anything else that I say this morning, understand that not only is God our hope, but He's our biggest threat. What do you mean, Brother Darty? Look what the Scripture says, the fire of God's judgment and the fire to burn the vine. God's judgment is like an axe and it's like a fire. The waters of God's wrath are pounding against the dam of His mercy. It's neat time in America. It's time that America repents. National design, a national danger. Look at a, a great national despair. What is this despair? Look with me in verse 4. Look back up at verse 4. O Lord God of hosts, how long will thou be angry against, watch us now, the prayer of our people? Somebody says, well, we need to pray. Let me tell you something this morning. You can pray all you want. But the prayers of a wicked, unrepented people only move God to anger. Religion, hear me, hear me, religion without righteousness is repugnant to God. The cesspool of iniquity is full and running over in America. And yet we dare play God bless America. It's a wonder... He doesn't blot us off the face of the earth. Oh, Brother Darty, we're not as bad as others. But here's the problem. Americans have the idea that we can sow our wild oats six days a week and come to church on Sunday and pray for our crop failure and everything will be all right. But prayer is not a smoke screen that will hide our sins. The Word says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. God help us this morning. Great national despair. There's also a spiritual sterility in that he will not hear our prayers and the personal sorrow. Look at verse 5. Thou feedest them with the bread of tears and givest them tears to drink with great measure. We can't flaunt God and prosper. Israel was a nation baptized in salty tears. So will America be. So follows sin like night follows day. We want peace without the Prince of Peace. Verse 4 speaks of spiritual sterility. Verse 5 speaks of personal sorrow. Verse 6, 
And here's the one that stirs me, a national shame. Verse 6, thou makest us a strife to our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. The world calls America the great Satan, and they laugh at us. Once mighty, America has become the laughing stock of all nations. Blessed, however, is the nation whose God is the Lord. Great national despair, spiritual sterility, personal sorrow, national shame. Brother Doherty, is there hope for America? I saved the best for last. Yes, there is. There's hope for America. There can be. There can be a national deliverance. There are three elements to a national deliverance. Look at verse 14. Watch this. It first begins with the man of God. He says, Return, we beseech thee, O Lord of hosts. Look down from heaven, and behold, visit this vine, and the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted. Watch this now. And the branch, everybody look at that right there. Underscore the word branch. That thou madest strong for thyself. Here's the vine, but there's a special branch in the vine. Now, watch this. It is, it is burned with fires, cut down. They perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy right hand, watch this now, be upon the man of thy right hand. In the original language of the word branch in verse 15 and the word man in verse 17 is the same word. There is a man who is a branch and a branch who is a man, a man that is a branch out of this nation. Let the hand, thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand. There is a man at the right hand of majesty on high. Who is he? Does anybody know his name? His name is Jesus. I'm telling you today, there is hope for America. It is hope. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. There must be a coming, a return to Jesus Christ. Not only is the man of, there is a man of God, there must be a movement of God. Look at verse 18. So we will not go back from thee. Watch this. Quicken us and we will call upon thy name. I don't know any other way except for God to stir our hearts we need for God to quicken us, to breathe on us, to, to, bro, to blow on us a move of God. And lastly, I want you to notice the miracle of God. Look at verse 19. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, <laughs> and we shall be saved. Woo! When we enthrone God, when we implore the movement of God, we will see in America the miracle of God. God wants to bless. God wants to send revival. But what must we do? What is our part? I'll close with this today. First of all, we must look up. There's only one who can save us. His name is not Donald Trump. His name is not Joe Biden. He does not have his headquarters in the Pentagon. We must look up to God. Not only must we look up, we must fess up. We must get on our face before God. Is there any un confess sin in your life today you're watching by live stream perhaps you may be here nearby in the service here this morning is there any unconfessed sin in your life don't talk about what others ought to do we need to fess up not only must we look up and fess up we must speak up we need to speak up in the name of Jesus Satan's strategy is to keep good men silent in evil times. We need to stand up for what is right. 
But Brother Doherty, there's so few of us and there's so many of them. Listen, God always hears the prayers of a righteous remnant. We don't need more people. We need better people. Castro, think about it, he took Cuba with a band of 80 cutthroats. Lenin began his communist revolution with only a few thousand in 1917. Romania removed Ceausescu from power by the church gathering in the streets of Timisoara. Jesus began the mightiest movement the world has ever known with only 12 disciples. I like what Joshua said, Joshua 23 and 10. One man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. It is he who fighteth for you as he promised you. I'm only one. You may say, Brother Darty, I'm only one. That's so little. I say the day myself, I'm only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do. And what I can't do, God will do. Will you say that this morning? Will you be one today that say, I'm not waiting on anybody else. I'll be the one God can count on. Listen to me. America's in trouble. What the world needs, what America needs, what Cleveland, Tennessee needs, what South Cleveland Church of God needs, what you need is a league with the Lord, an alliance with the Almighty, a peace conference with the Prince of Peace. I wonder how many this morning, let's say, Brother Darty, I know that if I died right now, I'd go straight to heaven because of what Jesus has done for me. If you couldn't say that, today's the right day for you to become that one, become a difference maker by letting Jesus make a difference in your life. I want you to be saved today. I want you to come to the Lord. I want you to count for Him. For God committeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Father, thank You for Your Word. We see the parallel of Psalms 80 between Israel and America. Yes, Lord, it's horrible what we're witnessing today in our country. But Lord... I'm praying for national revival. I'm praying, God, for a visitation from heaven. In every home, begin in the homes of these that are here. These that are listening from live stream. Homes around this city. Homes throughout the state of Tennessee and across this great country. Send revival. In Jesus' name. God bless you for being in church today. Even though it's parking lot church, it's just as well. If you enjoyed the word of the Lord this morning, give God praise by hawking your horn. Thank you for joining my live stream today. God bless you. I say to all of you, pray for your pastor and his wife that they be refreshed and come back home ready to go as they've always been. God bless you for being in the house of God today. Thank you so much for hearing God's word. Be blessed this week. If Brother Doherty bless you with the preaching of the word, would you let him know that right now by honking your horn? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, South Cleveland, for your faithfulness. At the, the gates going out, we have ushers there to help you to continue to give and support your church. God bless you. As Brother Doherty said, please pray for Pastor and Don as they take a few days to rest and get away. They needed that. But they'll be back this week. Pray for them. Have a wonderful week, South Cleveland. We love you. God bless you.